I'm going to tell you what rooftop tent is best. Okay, so that's actually impossible. There's a lot of key factors when picking out a tent, and the things that make a tent best for me might not make it best for you. So instead, we're gonna do a quick episode of tent speed dating. Over the years, I've actually owned or tested over a dozen tents. Today, we're gonna rapidly run through all of those tents and tent styles, and I'm gonna point out some of the key factors so you can pick out what tent is actually best for you. If you haven't seen one of these before, this is where I review a product I paid full price for, have no sponsorship or bias towards, and have tested hard. Like, probably to the breaking point. Some of the key factors to consider when picking out a tent for yourself, what your vehicle type is, so what kind of tent can it actually handle and what type of tent fits well on that type of vehicle. Who's sleeping in the tent? If you have two people sleeping in a tent versus four people in a tent, your, your options change drastically. Value and budget, everybody's idea of what an affordable tent is is different. And then finally, ease of use. Ease of use across the board is a major factor. If your tent is hard to use and it's a pain in the butt, you probably won't use it. Okay, so wedge tents come in two varieties. Basically, they have a classic wedge and then they have a pop-out wedge where they added more space to a wedge. Wedge tents look really good on SUVs and Jeeps because they are very thin and kind of fit along a big, long, flat roof like this one behind me. However, when you put them on a truck, if you have a short bed truck, you need a taller rack to where you can overhang part of it above the roof. If you don't have a tall rack, then it will stick off the back of your truck a good 12 to 18 inches, depending on how you set it up. If you have a full-size bed, nothing to worry, it'll fit just fine. As far as value goes, this category of tents has some of the best value out there right now, basically due to recent competition has brought the price down from the $4,000 range all the way down to the $1,500, $1,600 range. Finally, these tents max out at about two and a half people, so two adults and a baby or two adults and a dog. Uh, if you're trying to cram more than that in there, it's probably not gonna be very comfortable. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and throw one minute on the clock for each tent that I've owned, and I'm gonna give you the highlights, just the most important stuff. This should be fun trying to keep it under a minute. I don't know if I can do this. Okay, so the first tent up is the Area BFE Wedge Tent. This was when Wedge Tents very, very first came out, so they're still figuring out what works in these things. It was a great tent, um, it was super durable, had no issues with longevity or anything like that. However, there were some things they hadn't quite figured out back then. For example, it didn't have insulation on the roof of any kind. It was just the exposed honeycomb aluminum. So that collected lots of condensation that rained down onto your feet. So your feet would get quite wet in this tent. Um, and then on top of that, there was no condensation mat underneath the mattress. So you basically just had a great place for a mold farm. Area BFE is still making tents. They do sell condensation mats, but it's an addition, uh, an additional add-on. As far as I can tell from pictures, it doesn't look like they've added any insulation to the ceiling and their tents are priced at $41.95. If I had any advice for an Area BFE, I would say they might want to take a look at the price war that's happened. That's pretty expensive uh, for what you're getting in that tent right now. The Roof Nest Falcon Pro was a tent that I borrowed from a friend and was able to check out. This is Roof Nest's flagship product. It is one of the first wedges where they actually added the pop out on the end, which allows the wedge to open wider and then pop out and give you more room inside. So it's a very roomy wedge. I think Roof Nest is the first to do that. I'm not positive on that. This tent weighs about 170 pounds. The $4,000 price tag is there because it does have a lot of high-end finishes where it has like a blackout lining on the inside of the tent. It comes with a more comfortable ladder. It has a single piece of stamped aluminum for the ceiling and that is also insulated. That gives you a little bit of extra room for storing additional blankets and pillows. So this is one of those tents where they kind of thought of everything, but you also have to pay the price for the fact that they thought of everything. It is really a great tent. I'd highly recommend checking it out if you are shopping for a wedge and budget really isn't an issue.
The Top Oak Wedge Tent, I think, wants to pick a fight with everyone because it came to market with a price tag of $1,600, including shipping. The only wedge that I know cheaper than that is the Nature Nest, but that one does not have the additional pop-out design. That one's just a standard wedge. So this one sold on Amazon. For $1,600, you would think, okay, then it's probably got bottom-of-the-line features, but that's not entirely true. It has the insulated roof, albeit the insulation is a little bit thinner than the roof nest. Um, it has the pop-out design like the roof nest. Um, it has most of the features of the roof nest, just the polish and um, finishes aren't just quite exactly on the same level, but that would be to expect being $1,600 versus $4,000. There are some things about the Top Oak that I actually even like better than the roof nest, where they actually made it more spacious inside, which is kind of nice. It is a very solid tent. I've been testing it and using it for a while, and I really don't have any complaints on it, actually. For a full deep dive side-by-side -side comparison of the Roof Nest Falcon Pro and the Top Oak Wedge Tent, check out this video that I made recently. So next up we have CVT. Uh, so the CVT wedge I believe is called the Mount Hood now. These do have carpeted roofs, so they don't have a lot of insulation up on the roof, but they do have carpet, which definitely helps solve some of the condensation issues. Um, they also come with condensation mats. One thing that CVT does that most other wedge companies don't do is they actually provide their wedges in three different sizes. So they have a small, medium, and large. One way to think of that is the small is two people snuggling kind of a lot, um, and then it gets bigger from there. The reason that they do that though is if you want a wedge tent on top of like a Subaru and you don't want it sticking out over the sides of a smaller car, uh, their small wedge is pretty good for that actually. Um, the only problem is these tents are really heavy, so keep that in mind with cars that have really light payloads. These tents weigh in at 192 pounds for the small, all the way up to 214 pounds for the large. The CVT price is in at $3,000. It is in the middle of the pack, and the finishes on it are also in the middle of the pack. Um, so I actually think they're appropriately priced. They're definitely worth checking out. The Go Fast Wedge is kind of its own animal. First of all, it is a really large wedge, which is great. There's plenty of room, but it actually weighs in only at 137 pounds. So if you're struggling on payload, the Go Fast is actually pretty compelling. It's saving you almost 45, 50 pounds compared to some tents out there. It is $4,000, and for $4,000, it seems fairly featureless. It doesn't even have a lining on the ceiling, so you actually have some of those issues with condensation flowing down to your feet. It's easy to solve. You can put carpet panels up there if you want to yourself. One of the things about the GoFast is it is built out of some of the most durable materials, and then if anything breaks, it's rebuildable. It's the only tent on this list that is rebuildable. So it's a fairly interesting tent when it comes to that aspect. It's definitely different than all the others, um, and it's it's fairly expensive for sure. Okay, a couple other contenders you might want to check out. I haven't tested these tents, but they're at least worth taking a look at. First of all, there is an Alucab LT50 out there. It is the lightest wedge on the market, I believe, at only 111 pounds. It costs $2,699, so if you're trying to run a wedge on a light, light car with a very small payload, it might be worth checking out the Alucab. Intrepid is a brand new company to the scene. I haven't even got my hands on one of the tents yet because they're so new, where they're making a wedge that is like the pop-out style, but then it actually has a hinge in the middle of the roof, so it even pops out even further and gives you even more room. And looking at the inside of those tents, it kind of looks like their finishes are right up there with eye camper where they're pretty luxurious and really kind of nice looking. Um, those ring in at about $4,000. They're probably lowering the gauntlet at roof nest and kind of trying to compete for that luxury wedge tent space. Okay, and then a weird one that I think is on the market is the eye camper BDV. Eye campers known for their higher end finishes. Uh, they didn't have a wedge, so they decided to bring one to market. It comes with the unique privilege of you having to put the whole thing together, which actually looks like quite a bit of work, although it is priced at $2,299. So they're trying to compete at the lower end of the market. Um, so that's probably why you have to build it yourself. Okay, so the first ever hard shell rooftop tent that I had was the Roof Nest Sandpiper. And let's just, I'll call it what it is. This tent was a total disaster. Uh, first of all, it had, of course, some kind of plastic shell, but the shell definitely couldn't handle sun. 
Uh, so the sun pretty much ruined that shell in less than two years. It was leaking water and unusable. Uh, they had discontinued the tent by then, so when we called to ask if we could get a replacement shell of some kind for it, they said, too bad. Before the shell destroyed itself from the sun, uh, we also had problems with the hinges. So those it's a type of tent that pops straight up. The hinges are a little more complicated on those, and the hinges just simply fell apart in less than six months after being used probably only about 15 times. So we actually had to get a new set of hinges for it and install those ourselves. I don't really get this type of tent. The only advantage that I can see is when a whole tent pops up, maybe it's easier to climb over somebody in the middle of the night to use the bathroom and the ladder. But other than that, they don't pop up high enough. Like a wedge pops up high enough to where you can actually use the space as long as you're sitting on the tall side. These don't actually pop up tall enough to really have usable space. So the fact that the whole thing pops up doesn't really matter. I actually think this kind of, this design of tent is, is a dumb design. I think the wedge has antiquated it. You don't need this type of tent anymore. Um, if you're gonna go with a hard shell tent, go with one of the ones where it's a clamshell and opens up like this, and then the other piece folds out. And that's what we'll be talking about next. Okay, so the next hard shell tent that I owned was an iCamper Mini. The iCamper Mini has an incredibly small footprint, so it can actually fit in the back of like a Tacoma, like a short bed Tacoma or a short bed Tundra. You can tuck it in behind the cab so you don't have to take your mile per gallon hit. It still has tons of room because by nature of how it kind of clamshells one way and then opens up the other way, you actually get plenty of space. Even I would call it a little bit more space than a wedge style tent. It weighed in at a nice, right in that 165 pound range to 150 pound range, depending on all the stuff that you had on it. iCamper has some of the coolest finishes out there. Like on the inside of the tent on the roof, it has a map of the world. I know that that could be called gimmicky, but it just looks cool. They actually have real keys to lock their tents instead of just things that look like a key, but aren't really keyed. The shell that came on the iCamper seemed to stand up to the sun a little bit better than the roof nest but still after about two years i did notice that there was a lot of little spider web cracks in the finish but that's kind of just like a paint texture on it so it, it did seem to hold up it wasn't leaking water but after two years it was definitely showing some wear and tear i did not park it inside at all during that time it is parked outside so you know if you keep yours in a garage it'll probably last a lot longer the eye campers are very expensive this is a 4200 dollars tent by the time everything was said and done with shipping Okay, some other contenders in the hardtop space. CVT makes great hardtop tents, but if you were gonna check one out that's kind of more in that budget arena, I would check out OVS, which is Overland Vehicle Systems. They've been really pushing the buck on price lately, trying to be more competitive price point. So they've got some really solid hardtop tents out there that you can order straight off of Amazon. And they're in that $2,000 range. They're the kind that are gonna fold up and then out. I think they have a two person style and even I think a four person size. I haven't used those tents personally, um, but definitely worth checking out. Okay, so what did I learn about hardtops when I had them? Uh, they have more room than the wedge. That's one of the biggest benefits of them. Uh, there are models that will fit in a truck bed that you can keep nice and low. That's a huge, huge bonus for a lot of styles of trucks. They have annex rooms. I hate annex rooms personally because I think they're a pain to set up and take down. But if you need to sleep an army of people, being able to attach an annex room and have it off the side of your truck is pretty great. They have additional storage a lot of times too. A lot of times those plastic shells, they make just a little bit thicker so you can fit more bedding in there. The cons of this side, they have plastic shells. So plastic versus the sun is usually a losing battle over a long period of time. So I don't see these tents having the durability that the aluminum shell wedges have. They are louder in storms because there's a lot more fabric and it's not stretched as tight. And they are slower to pack up than a wedge tent. They aren't as slow as soft tops, but they are definitely significantly slower than the wedge design. Uh, if I was gonna buy one of these hard shells again, it would definitely be the Sky Camp Mini. That was a great tent. If I ever own a Tacoma in the future for running out and camping on the weekends, I would probably stick a Sky Camp Mini on it because I could keep it down nice and low. Okay, let's talk soft top rooftop tents. These are basically like the gateway rooftop tent. Almost everybody that owns rooftop tents started with one of these. The good news about these is I can probably cover them in less than a minute. Okay, so first up is the Tough Stuff Overland. That was the very first rooftop tent that I ever owned. I had it and it had it with an annex room. Um, it has tons of space for a very cheap price. These things are around a thousand bucks nowadays. When I'm calling out prices, keep in mind, especially with like 
Since like soft tops, you gotta catch them on a sale a lot of times. You're usually saving anywhere from like $300 to $400 when you're catching these guys on sale. It was lightweight at only 120 pounds and it was an absolute pain to put away. These are the kind of things that married couples fight over. I, I absolutely hate that aspect of soft top tents. The Smitty Built XL rooftop tent. So this is the, hey, I wanna sleep in army rooftop tent. This is a four person tent that you can stick on top of an SUV very easy. It has a similar footprint to the wedge, even though it's a little bit even bigger than that. So they do not fit well in the backs of trucks. Yet again, you're gonna have to have them on a taller rack, but these things can sleep four people and they only weigh 170 pounds, which is pretty impressive. It weighs the exact same amount as a wedge tent, yet it sleeps twice as many people. They have even more fabric to put away. I've seen people put these tents away and it can take as long as like 15 minutes, but a weight to the amount of people you can sleep ratio, pretty impressive. And by the time you stick an annex room on one of these, you're literally talking about sleeping like eight people uh, comfortably or having a whole dining room table inside of it in the bottom. So. If you're just going for space and that's your number one concern, you can get a lot of space for a really good price too. I see these on sale all the way down to around $1,100 sometimes. Okay, next up, I had an Overland Vehicle System soft top tent. It was almost exactly the same as the Tough Stuff tent. I didn't really notice any of the finishes any higher or lower. In fact, most of these tents feel like they're made in the exact same place. So the Overland Vehicle Systems, the biggest thing I'm noticing with them, I already said it earlier, they're getting really aggressive on pricing. So if you're looking at a tent and they look like they're the exact same quality as somebody else's, you might wanna check OVS because the pricing right now for them is getting pretty aggressive out there. Tapui soft top tents were like one of the OG tents, one of the original ones out there in the very, very beginning. I think the guy used to make them and sell them out of his garage, I believe. Um, but Tapui had a reputation for a really high quality product. They have since then been bought by Thule, the, the company that makes racks for vehicles. And they have gotten really aggressive on their pricing where they're hitting that price point of right around $1,000 lately. Uh, Tapui tent is the only tent that I ever had fall apart on me in the soft top category. But in all reality, that was a tent that we had in Baja and ran in Baja nonstop. So just some of the bolts jiggled loose. It was nothing that a little bit of Loctite wouldn't have solved. Um, so it seemed to work fine. But Thule is now one of the big boys um, getting pumped out in mass. So I don't really know how their quality has changed since we owned one way, way back in the day. So you'd have to read some reviews out there. Okay, so the final soft top tent is a Yakima. Now Yakima actually does have something where they they have a little bit different than other people. They have some really small soft top tents that weigh in only at about 110 pounds. So of course, these are really great for cars, light, lighter cars, going after the Subarus and things like that. I also had a friend that had one and they put it on top of their 4Runner and they were able to still get into one of those normal low garages. So they have some of the smallest soft tops, but if you're shopping for like a super light, casual rooftop tent that you're not gonna be using all the time, uh, Yakima might be a good place to go. And they, they've got some pretty aggressive pricing out there as well, just watch for a sale. Uh, number one, you can fit these easily behind a cab on a truck. Not the XL version that sleeps four, but all the other ones you can. So that's pretty luxurious. They're also lightweight. So that's a big advantage because everybody's struggling with payload issues nowadays. With the bigger ones, obviously you can sleep on Army. These things are cheap. They come in in that $800 to $1,200 price range, which is even cheaper than the wedges. These tents also tend to be fairly generous with being able to leave your sleeping bags and your pillows in there and just squash them because that soft top cover on it has some flex and gives you some space for all that type of storage. A lot of the cons of these tents is I've already covered. They are super loud. They are a pain to put away. They are a bigger mile per gallon hit than almost any other tent if you have them up on your roof because that soft top will balloon up and cause even more drag. And they are tall, so kiss your garage goodbye, more than likely. I will give you a crazy stat to kind of illustrate my point. If you sleep in a soft top tent a hundred times and open it up and repack it up a hundred times, that is going to waste roughly 28 hours of your life. If you slept in this tent behind me, a hundred times and pack it up and put it away a hundred times, that will only waste an hour and a half of your life. That is a big difference over time. It adds up, you will notice it. If I was gonna buy a soft top again, which one would I buy? I wouldn't, 
I would buy a wedge. That's all there is to it. I would buy a wedge. They're close enough in price nowadays between like a $1,200 soft top and a $1,600 wedge. The wedges are just better. They're that much better. Okay, I wanted to briefly cover camper shells. We are not going to talk about and compare all the different styles. Uh, we'll have a different episode someday where we go into camper shells in depth. The only reason I'm even putting this category on here is just for the go fast camper. And the reason I'm doing that is a lot of people will buy a shell for the back of their truck and then they will stick a rooftop tent on top of it like a wedge. And the deal is the go fast is really the only camper shell that is in the price range of where it would cost about the same amount of money as buying a nice rooftop tent and a nice camper shell together. The only difference and the only reason I'm bringing this up is the go fast shell and tent combined into the go fast camper were designed to work together. So they're gonna be stronger than any other combo that you're gonna find on the market of mixing and matching a camper shell and a rooftop tent. So I do think the go fast camper is a very competitive alternative to buying a camper shell and buying a rooftop tent. I think price-wise it's there, and then weight-wise it's a big winner. Usually you're gonna be saving on weight and that's gonna help you with your payload numbers in the long run. So if you're looking for a camper shell and a rooftop tent to go on top of it, I think the GoFast is definitely worth checking out. For a full deep dive review of the GoFast camper, check out this video that I made just recently. Wow, well it's two in the morning over here and somehow we just managed to cover 20 tents in about 20 minutes. So that's quite the feat. It only took like 30 hours of editing to pull that together. So if you can do me a favor, hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed, hit the like button if you like these types of videos so I know that this effort is actually worth it and leave a comment. And if you don't know what to say, just say hi. It's always good to hear from you guys and I will see you next Sunday. Editor Nathan needs to go to bed.